Hey there, I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Left to Hate. And today we're taking a look at Floriferous by Pencil First Games. Floriferous is a card drafting set collection game in which you are going to be moving down a line of flower cards and uh, scoring cards. And you're choosing which one you're, want, you're wanting to draft each round. And the uh, order in which you draft determines player order for the next round. And as I said, this is a set collection game, game, so you are trying to meet certain scoring requirements on the cards that you draft. Let's take a look at it down below. We'll show you how it works, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here's Floriferous. Let me show you guys this card drafting set collection game. You are going to be moving your player pieces on down the line, selecting cards from each column until you get to the end. And then you will refill the playing space with new cards and you will move back this way for your second round. You'll repeat the process for a third round going back this way, at which point you will gather up all your cards and see who has the most points. In more detail how this game is going to work, Whoever is at the top of the line here, that's going to be the start player. So in this case, that would be pink. And pink has a choice to make. They can take any card from this first column. And you can see here that we have cards that are uh, regular sized cards. That's what these top three cards are. And then you've got smaller uh, miniature cards here that are going to be your scoring objectives. This is how you're going to get a bulk of the bulk of your points right here. You also have some cards up here. These are some objectives that you are trying to accomplish. You need to have this arrangement of icons in the cards that you have drafted. If you can do this by the end of the first round, you're going to place your token here and get five points. If you do it in the second round, you'll place it there and you get three points. And if you do it in the final round, you will get two points. And uh, that is for all players. All players can try to achieve that. Let's go over what some of these cards mean. So you're gonna have three types of cards that are gonna be out here on uh, the bigger size cards. We'll come to the littler cards here in a minute. The first type that you have, these are uh, sculpture cards and they have this icon down here in the bottom. And you can see that there are the numbers right here. Whoever has the most sculpture cards at the end of the game, they are gonna get five points. Whoever has the second most is gonna get three and whoever has the third most is going to get one. And so there you go. That's how those cards work. Uh, you can see that we have another sculpture card over here. So if I wanted to take that one, I would, might want to swing back around and take that one later on in the round. The second type of card is the most common type, and it's just an arrange. Uh, it's a flower. Uh, this happens to be a lily, and uh, it has uh, orange on it. This is an orange lily. The color does matter, and there is a butterfly. As you can see in the picture right here, there's a butterfly, but uh, there's also the but butterfly icon in the bottom. So there are three things about this card that are important, the flower type, the color, and if there is an icon that goes with it. There's also a stone uh, pebble token here on top of the uh, card. And the reason why this is important, because if you select this card, you get to take the pebble token and pebbles are worth uh, one point for every two that you have at the end of the game. Down here, we have a regular daisy card. And then the third type of card that you will come across in the deck are these arrangement cards. And how this works is, is you're going to want to try to get these three types of uh, cards in order to get the points over here. If you're only able to get one of these three, then you're going to get one point. If you can get two, it's worth three points. And if you can get all three, it's worth five points at the end of the game. This particular one wants a uh, daisy. That it, and then a white card, and then a card with a B on it. So that's how these cards work. And again, starting with the first player, they're going to draft one of these cards. And so let's say that uh, Pink decides that they want to go right here and take this lily. They're going to take that uh, pebble token. Next would be the blue player, and the blue player has to choose from whatever is left. And maybe they want to come here. Now, this particular card says that you're going to get two points for every one of these icons on the cards that you have throughout the course of the game. So you would get to take this. And then the yellow player would go and say the yellow player goes up here. You're going to take all of your cards. You're going to clear out any cards that weren't selected. 
And then starting with whoever's at top, they are going to draft from these cards next. Now you can see here that we do have two cards that are face down. You don't know what you'll be drafting if you take this card, but you will get to go first in the next round. So that's the uh, benefit there for taking that. This is going to continue, as I said, until you get all the way down to the end of the line. At the end of the round, you're going to look to see if anybody has completed any of these objectives, in which case they will place their token in that spot there. And then you're going to refill the board and you're going to go back this way, repeating the process. And again, looking to see if anyone has completed any objectives. And then you'll move back this way again. Finally, looking at the third time to look to see if anybody's completed any objectives. At the end of the game, whoever has the most stones is going to uh, gather the get the cup of tea and it scores them two points at the end of the game. Then you'll count up all of your points, see who has the most, and they'll, that will be the winner. And that is how you play Floriferous. There's not really too much here to go over as far as tricky rules for uh, casual and non-gamers. The biggest thing is probably just to let people know that you're not going to score hardly any points if you don't take any of these bottom cards at some point throughout the course of the game. As I mentioned earlier, you can score points off of these uh, arrangement cards and the sculpture cards and the end of round uh, bonuses, but for the most part, you're going to want to be getting these cards at some point in the game. It does mean that you will go last in the next round, but that's the price you have to pay if you want to score points. Now, taking a look at the insert, this game is going to come with a plastic insert in which you are going to place all of the poker size cards in one of the wells, and you can see that it holds the flower tokens in the middle. You're going to place the smaller cards in one of the other wells, and then all of the other components go into plastic baggies that you can put on top of those smaller cards. Rule book fits on top. This is an insert that works very nice. I like it. And that's it. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on Floriferous. And we're back, and now we're going to show you some gameplay footage of Sam and I's game of Floriferous while we share our thoughts on this one. So Sam, this is a very beautiful game, beautiful artwork with flowers. Uh, looks like it's maybe some watercolor uh, artwork to it, I'm not sure, but uh, what did you think about this one, seeing it on the table? I think that the artwork throws you off a little bit because it looks like a very, it looks like a very simple game. When It, it actually is quite complex with um, the amount of thinking and planning and strategizing you have to do with it. So I yeah. think the floral motif kind of makes you think that it won't be as um, challenging as it actually is. I think of it as being wel welcoming. I look at it and I say, you know, this game looks inviting. It looks, you know, like it, it even says on the box, a relaxing game. Um, I look at that and I think exactly that's what it makes me feel like. This is relaxing. And yeah. you're right. You open it up and you get to playing it and you realize there's a lot more game yeah, than yeah. what it would appear. Now you said complex. I want to ask you on that one. Was this a difficult game or do you mean complex in, in terms of Oh, I could go this way, or I could go that way, or I could go this way. And Both. I, there's a little bit more of a learning curve on this one than, than some of our other ones. Um, okay. I mean, it's kind of right there in the middle. I think it, it's not so complex that I didn't understand it at all, but it, it does require some brain power. And then there is the decision making. What yeah. am I going to do? Because many of the cards can be can fit into multiple categories. So how am I going to use that? How right. am I going to score that? Yeah. Um, and that's it's uh, the the age range 14 plus I definitely think is accurate. Our, our, our big kids just aren't uh, mentally ready for these types of games okay. yet. Yeah. And I would agree with you. I, th I think to some extent, I'll agree with you there that there is several choices as far as you know which cards to draft because they can be used in so many different sets like you were saying there sam um, but that is quite a lot of different layers to have to yeah. think about and keep up with probably more so than what younger kids are able to do that being the case most adults i think can probably yeah. handle that and so if you're playing this with non-gamer casual gamer adults i feel this is still a, a, yeah. a fairly light enough game that you can you can play it pretty yeah, easily i think i always am thinking of it from the point of view of a seven and nine year old <laughs> sure, so somebody playing with yeah. kids yeah now that being the case um let's talk about the enjoyment or the gaming experience that you had with this one talk about that a little bit um, yeah, I mean, once you get the hang of it and you kind of figure out what your own strategy is going to be, I think it was a really enjoyable game. I, I lots of choices and um, what kind of um, what kind of uh, game would you call this? Um, 
Well, it's a car drafting set collection type Yeah, the set collection part of it. I mean, I do enjoy that. So it it was an enjoyable game. Yeah, I think so many times when you're playing these kind of car drafting type games, and and Pencil First Games puts out some fantastic car drafting type games, especially from these designers that you see here with this one, um, that you you go into it not really knowing what your strategy is going to be until you start to draft some of your first cards mm-hmm. and some of your first scoring cards. That's what's unique about this one is you're not just drafting the cards you're using to make up those sets, but you're also drafting the cards that determine the sets you need. And so having to kind of pick from both of those angles makes this game a little bit unique and you don't know what your strategy is going to be until you get a few of those and then you start to formulate an idea oh yeah i'm getting more more scoring cards for tulips so i need to focus more on tulips or different bugs so i need to try to get all the different kind of bugs there are i enjoy that experience with this so you you had a generally pretty good time yeah, with this one. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Let's get into our pros and cons when it comes to Floriferous. What were the things that you really enjoyed about this one, Sam? I mean, it is it's a very pretty game. It is um, you know, I, I don't know if relaxing, but it, it's a you know, it's a thinky game and it it takes some time and I think sometimes that in itself can be enjoyable okay um just the you know time you spend figuring out what your next move is going to be i would i would describe it as a quiet game yeah and you know there's games where you're going to hoop and holler and it's really exciting this is more on the more mellow end of the emotional spectrum i mean there can be some times where somebody drafts the card you really wanted and you're kind of like oh how you know but generally this is kind of a a mellow and and a relaxing experience. Yeah. It says a relaxing card game. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so I enjoyed that part of it. And then um, card the the drafting aspect of it and figuring out what you're going to do. And I mean, in general, it was a, a really enjoyable game. I think it took a little bit longer to kind of get the hang of it and figure out what you're doing and a little bit more of a learning curve. So yeah. that's just something to keep in mind when you are playing with non-gamers. Any cons against it? I mean, not really. Not that that comes to mind. Okay. I'll throw out there real quick that, uh, and this isn't unique to this specific game, but it's unique to, or it's a general thing with card drafting games that if you go into it and you draft poorly, poor cards early on, and the right sets that you're trying to score for don't come out or you, you're not able to get to them, you can you can fall behind quickly in yeah. this game and, and you may not be able to catch back up. Yeah. Now that's just going to be dependent upon your player ability of being able to draft better from that point moving forward as well as luck as far as what cards come out. So that's not always going to be the case, but you can have that be an issue with this game. So do you want to throw that out there on it? All right, so scale of 1 to 10, love to hate. What are you going to give Floriferous? Um, I'd probably give it a 7.2. Okay. All right. 7.2. Solid score. Um, I was right there with you. I'm a little bit higher. I was going to say this is about a 7.3, 7.4. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to side on the higher side there. 7.4. I very much enjoyed this one. It's one of my uh, more favorite Favorite, yeah, more favorite is the right creamer there, I think. Uh, games from Pencil First Games, these card drafting style type games that is uh, just a very calm, enjoyable, easygoing time that does have a little bit more of a thinkier side to it than some of their lighter games. So I do very much enjoy Floriferous. Highly recommend it. So go check it out. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.